Good evening all and welcome. Before we begin, just two little warnings. The first is that, of course, this is a very dark topic, so viewer discretion is extremely advised. Please make sure that no one who shouldn't be listening is listening in. Secondly, is that these are truly disturbing stories, but certainly not true. At least I really hope not. So, I hope you're ready. If you're still here, it's time to get very uncomfortable and let the deep web take control. The other day, I was doing what I do best. And by that, I mean sifting through the depraved cesspool of the internet, known as the deep web. I spend a lot of time doing that, just randomly clicking links to things I probably shouldn't, and then being horrified by what lies on the other side. I've seen a lot of stuff on there. Gore boards, dox bins, torture sites, animal cruelty. You get the picture. You've all heard the stories. Everything wrong with the human species can be found somewhere on the deep web. Or so they say. I find all of it fascinating to glimpse people when anonymity takes hold and see what monstrous things people are capable of behind closed doors. It's like peeling back the curtain on Sesame Street and finding the showrunners having a satanic orgy backstage. You see people for what they really are, monsters. So I began my voyage, monster in hand and a freshly stoned mind ready to be mortified. From my closet, the inflammable erotic doll I had been given as a gag Christmas present looked on in a disapproving manner with a lifeless, opened mouth stare. Don't judge me, Miley. I performed the usual diagnostics and booted up tour. I found myself on the hidden wiki soon after, staring at the dozens of links available for the taking. I saw little of interest, so I quickly switched over to DuckDuckGo. I pondered upon what to type in search. You have to be careful how you go about browsing Tor, and randomly entering murder or torture into a search bar could get you into a world of trouble. You never know who's lurking. I finally ended up typing in one word, sick, that I thought might get some interesting results. The results were initially less than stellar, but soon I did find myself on an apparent blog of some sort. Darkness of the soul. Edginess level max. I glanced through the blog and found dozens of entries ranging from paranormal, conspiracy theories, short stories and real life crime essays. It was actually pretty interesting, and the guy who wrote it indeed was gifted in the vernacular department. I spent some time glancing through them, until one entry caught my eye, titled, Dark Sites on the Dark Web. Are they real? I found my interest piqued and so clicked it. The article listed several relatively prominent and notoriously vile sites, like Cannibal Cafe, Cruel Onion Wiki, Violent Fantasies and Playpen, none of which were what I was really looking for. But then one caught my eye that I didn't recognize. It was listed as only the site with no name. The author was even kind enough to provide a link, which I decided to click on without a moment's hesitation. The hidden site has been seized. As part of a joint law enforcement operation by blah blah blah, I groaned while reclining in my swivel chair and downing the remainder of my monster. They always have to take the fun away. Just as I was about to click back through, I noticed a small detail which drew my attention back. In the lower left-hand quadrant of the page, there was a slight discoloration that caught my eye. I think I've seen that message hundreds of times, but this one looked different. On a whim, I highlighted that section with my mouse. Just as I had suspected, a series of texts lit up with strands of numbers. The numbers looked like gibberish at first, but on closer inspection, I noticed a single Russian word, Vojti, translation, enter. Fortunately for me, I speak some Russian and recognize the phrase right away. I hovered the cursor over the word and watched as the pointer shifted to indicate a hidden link, cleverly hiding behind a smokescreen like that. That was a first for me. 
I clicked it. The page loaded for a while before finally opening to a new page. It was black with red font, and much as the article suggested, had no title on the top of the page. It appeared to be just another catalogue site. There was actually very little substance anywhere on the page, just random links with no indication as to where they led. I clicked several of the links, but all of them turned out to be dead, except one, which opened to a disgusting image of a woman taking a dump on a guy's face. I nearly vomited on sight. I have a pretty strong stomach when it came to gore and violence, but poop is my kryptonite. Why would someone allow someone else to defecate on them, I will never understand. But then again, there are a lot of things I will never understand, especially regarding the dark web. I knew it was a troll on their end, and I'll admit they got me pretty good. I knew they were hiding something though. I mean, why would they go to the trouble of constructing an elaborate decoy if there wasn't anything illegal going on? Sure, creating the backdrop of the infamous government agency wouldn't be too difficult. But if nothing illegal was going on, then why bother to do it at all? Mimicking my effects from earlier, I highlighted the page once again. Sure enough, there was something at the bottom of the page, which had been all but invisible beforehand. It was a series of numbers spaced out horizontally. I thought at first it was another address, but there was a no.onion at the end. The number were organised as follows, 49116272. 12138105. I thought it was some sort of password at a first glance, but to what? All the links were dead except for the one with the nasty image, and I was not about to click that again. I pondered over the image for a moment before noticing another detail. I counted the links, and noticed that there were 12 in total that had to be related to the numbers. I thought maybe about clicking each link in the order correlating to this strand of numbers and it would unlock something, so I tried it. But after clicking through the last one, nothing had changed. I sat back again and studied the chain of numbers. There had to be a pattern or method to how they were organized. I pulled my phone out and punched the numbers into Google, but found nothing but tips for calculating fractions. In no mood for math, I put my phone away and stared at the screen. What if the numbers weren't related to the links? What if it was simply a clue to another site of some kind? I scoured all over the page, clicking every square inch to try and find something. I don't know why I had become so infuriated with discovering the answer, but boredom can be a deadly motivator. Suddenly, I was struck with an epiphany while staring at the top link. It had 12 digits in it. In fact, most if not all .onion addresses have 12 digits in them. What if the numbers were clues to an entirely new address? I counted the links, and lo and behold, there was a grand total of 12, each with 12 digits. Maybe each number was in relation to the link in the sequence. Maybe they were dead links because they were never designed to lead anywhere. They were only designed to be clues. On a new hunch, I wrote down the fourth digit on the top link, the ninth on the second, the eleventh on the third, and so on. Until I had an entirely new web page address. I typed what I had written into the search bar and hit enter. My eyes widened as another web page began to load. I gave myself a metaphorical pat on the back for unraveling the mystery. But I had no idea what I was about to stumble into. The page finally loaded, and I was given a new name at the top of the page. Happy Fun Time. There were dozens of pictures and videos organized all over the page, none of which I would ever describe with the words happy or fun. It was a gore forum. My heart pulsated in my chest as I looked upon the first image. It was a picture of a guy who had his skull crushed between the tire of a truck. Blood and grey matter had been scattered everywhere as several onlookers stood about gawking at the scene. The second was an image of another man who had been decapitated and his genitals placed in his mouth. Probably a cartel victim, if I had to guess. The third was a video. A very depraved video. Of grainy quality, terrible and shaky, but after a few seconds it showed what appeared to be a lone woman walking down the street at night. The person filming was obscured by a couple of dozen yards in some alley. Suddenly two men 
emerged further down the street and bum rushed her and they were on her in an instant before she even had time to scream. They grabbed her and the cameraman sprang up and joined in on the action, all while he chuckled quietly in the most unsettling tone I've ever heard anyone utter. It was a giddy and juvenile giggle, the likes of which could only be produced by a severely deranged individual. The woman attempted to scream, but the two men held her mouth firmly, preventing her from doing so. They dragged her back into the alley, as the giggling cameraman followed. I turned it off, knowing exactly where it was heading. A reasonable person would have just exited the site at that point, but morbid curiosity is a powerful narcotic. The next entry on the list, though, ensured that any doubts I had of the authenticity of this site would no longer stand. It was a series of pictures, this time involving a little girl who couldn't have been older than five. The pictures were innocuous at first, or at least they would have been, had it not been the site they were posted on. It started as just pictures that looked like they'd been taken straight from a Facebook profile. A deep pit formed in my stomach as I sifted through them, and they grew ever more disturbing as they went. At first was the little girl with her family and dogs, but then, it started looking as though someone was taking them without her knowledge. There was one where she was swinging in the park with several other children, another where she was playing with toys in the backyard, with the picture looking like it was taken from over the fence. I felt a cold chill creep down my spine as I anticipated where the pictures were heading. One picture stood out immediately. It was of a house at night, illuminated only by the flash of the camera. The next showed two people, a man and a woman, laying in bed, clearly deceased. The next picture showed the little girl, distressed with a black swollen eye. The remainder of the pictures went on to show the unknown cameraman take her and everything that followed. It was very unpleasant. As horrible as these images were, the comments may have been almost on par. A mix of English and Russian, there were dozens of them with almost lobbying heaps of praise on the vile cameraman, expressing their own gratification with the actions. God is dead, and the dark web is proof of that. How in the world did we get into the point in which human beings like this can exist? I felt sorrow rise within me for the innocent young girl. Normally I would feel nothing from random people on the internet, but the tragedy that befell her reminded me of the things done to me in my own past. Maybe that's why I'm so messed up. More than sorrow, though, I felt anger. That's when I made my first mistake. Congratulations, fellas. You are without a doubt the most disgusting sacks of crap in the entire world. Cops have been notified, so have fun with each other in the time you have left. Might as well do the world a favor and just end it all now for yourself. I couldn't stop my hand from typing the message, but before I knew, my comment was inscribed just below all the others. It sat upon the screen for a moment before others began to appear, many of them insulting me and making fun of my empathy. Me and the other users fired back and forth for a while before a familiar user posted. It was the same profile which had first posted the images to begin with. His first post confused me as it was only a set of numbers with intermitted periods. I glanced at the comments before a horrible realization to Cole. It was an IP address, my IP address. Before I could react, he followed up with my full name address and social security number. I froze, unable to figure out how he had tracked me. It was then that I discovered my second mistake. I had neglected to activate Tails and had traced me. Thanks for stopping by, friend. See you soon, Winky Face. Then you will get a whole episode on this site starring you. His words sent chills down my spine. I stared at the screen dumbfounded and without a clue on how to proceed. Not content with two mistakes, and apparently with a secret lust for self-endangerment and masochism, I made a third. Piss off, I posted on the comments and quickly shut down the Tor browser and closed my laptop. I thought about the events that had just transpired and somehow ended up laughing them off. After all, there was no way that that guy is going through all the trouble of tracking someone down. People say that kind of stuff online all the time, but they never act on it. It's all just empty threats. Either way though, I had some preparations to take care of. I called the police on the non-emergency hotline and informed them of the events, 
I gave them the web address I had gotten, and they told me they would investigate it. After that, I called my insurance company to alert them about someone finding my social and proceeding to drink myself stupid, hoping liquor would drown away the memories. Days went by, nothing had changed. That is until the end of the week. I had just returned from work when I saw an unfamiliar black Astro van sitting down the block from my house. I paid it little mind at the time, and to be honest, only realized the implications after the event. I had since forgotten my careless spree in the deep web from days earlier, and thought nothing of the van. I got inside again and booted up my computer for some mindless browsing. As I did, I heard a noise outside. It sounded like someone climbing the fence outside. I live alone and have no pets, so I knew whatever it was was not from my house. I thought about investigating it, but quickly, the shattering of glass made it clear that this was not a good idea. I heard footsteps emanating from down below, giving the distinct sound of boots on hardwood floors. They grew nearer and nearer, and I found myself frozen with terror. It was like my body just refused to accept the situation and would not respond no matter what I did. That would have been the most astute time for me to have gotten my gun. Problem was, I didn't have one. The footsteps got louder and louder, all the way up the stairs with booming stomps of feet. I heard them trudge towards my bedroom door and linger, just outside. My heart was in my throat. My sweat had begun to drip from every square inch of my body. The door slowly creaked open, and in stepped a man with dark clothing and a simplistic porcelain mask. He walked inside, brandishing a suppressed pistol in his right hand. He grew closer and closer and walked right past me. I don't know why they never bothered to check the closet. It's always the first place I look. I guess maybe he was too distracted by the doll which sat at my desk, hooked up with headphones on to complete the decoy and lull in the approaching predator. I guess maybe he was too distracted by the doll which sat at my desk, hood up, with headphones on to complete the decoy and lull in the approaching predator. I guess that inflatable sex doll came in handy after all. He stepped towards the dummy, and I emerged from behind like a tiger in the jungle, silent and ravenous with hunger. I could feel the saliva begin to pour within my mouth as he reached for the prop. He put his hand on the dummy, and I put my hand on his throat. He struggled like they all do, but I quickly had stripped the firearm from his grip, a simple incision underneath the arm with a blade does wonders on demanding obedience. All it takes is a slit to the ulna nerve and the arm becomes essentially useless. The unbearable pain it causes is also a bonus. He dropped the gun and I slammed him to the ground face first. With one motion I put my foot on his left elbow and grabbed his wrist with my hand while the other held the blade to his throat. I then leered close behind him and whispered to him, What time does my episode air? I don't want to miss it. Before he could respond, I yanked his arm backwards while pushing my boot firmly on his elbow. His bone cracked and then popped from its hinge in his arm and bent backwards in the opposite direction it was meant to. The man cried out in an agonizing scream, but I silenced him quickly. He writhed upon the ground and moaned pitifully as blood began to drip from his mangled arm. He looked back to me, and I could see the oh-so-sweet luster of panic-stricken prey glisten in his dark, brooding eyes. The hunter had become the hunted, and I could not stop the diabolical grin from slithering its way onto my face. It was time to feed. It's a weird feeling when you first take someone's life. Most start as a crime of passion, Anger which boils over and leads to an act of violence. You learn a lot about people in the last seconds of life. Their secrets, their faith, their fear. You learn a lot about yourself too. Like how you, a normal dude, could easily swipe the life of another. There's a raw primal satisfaction in that feeling. Knowing that you yourself hold dominion over death. And the feeling is addictive. Once is never enough, though, and soon you will feel the urge to repeat your actions. The dopamine rush, the burst of euphoria, it's as sweet as honey to the mind. I was more careful from then on, picking targets with no relation to me and no reason to suspect of my intent. 
After a time, though, I grew tired of targeting the unsuspecting populace. It just didn't thrill me in the way it used to. You can only shoot fish in a barrel so many times before you want to dive into the ocean. What I needed was a new challenge, a new prey to rekindle the flame beneath me. I don't want the sheep anymore. What I needed now was the wolf. Do you have any idea how satisfying it is to see the eyes of a predator turn to those of a helpless lamb? To know that the terror they once instilled in others is now force-fed down their own throats. They never expect it, and there is no feeling so delicious. It is the ultimate poetic justice. Monstrous actions done to monstrous people. The flood of adrenaline through their system also gives the meat a wonderful flavor. My real name is irrelevant, for the annals of history will forget but I have become known in certain circles by my adopted moniker, Sig Sepsis. You can find my advertisement all over the web in one form or another. My skills are taboo, but refined, my clientele willing, and their tastes insatiable. To hunt a monster, you must know how to find a monster. You must become a monster. So to all the friends upon the forum known as Happy Fun Time, and the rest of the world at large, I see you. If any of you gentlemen would like to retrieve the remains of your fallen comrade, then you will know where to find me. And if you, dear reader, happen to partake in the odious fantasies of the repugnant underworld as well, then perhaps I will see you one day, too. I got suckered in by the crazy stories and hype from my friends about the deep web and wanted to see it for myself. So last week I downloaded Tor and started browsing. I didn't feel the need for any extra protection, being completely new to the entire concept, but in retrospect I wish I had. I spent hours clicking link after link, and truly I was starting to get bored and a little freaked out. I would found a whole host of your typical crackheads searching for drug sites, hitmen for hire, and lots of other military-grade weaponry. At one point, I find myself strolling through post after post of vivid descriptions of animal abuse and how those sick people who committed the atrocities got off to them every night. I wish I had just closed my computer right then and there, but something kept my curiosity alight. Honestly, I think some part of me just wanted to see how messed up the human mind could truly be. After a few more links to some horrible stuff I'd had enough. That's it, I sighed to myself. One more link and I swear I'm getting out of this hellhole. I clicked the link, going blindly into what, unbeknownst to me, would alter my already cynical views on humanity. I mean, honestly, when you hear a guy go on and on about lighting his dog on fire and watching it writhe, you tend not to think the best of people, but this was a whole new level of twisted. The first thing that caught my eye was the curly pink font that served at the title at the opening page. It read, Peace and Love. I remember it all too clearly as it seemed so out of place that in the slum of human refuse formerly known as the deep web, I scrolled down to find an image album and a simple chat box. No one was online at the moment, so I went ahead and clicked the first set of pictures, and I was not ready for what I was about to see. The very first was that of a young pregnant woman, bawling her eyes out. She looked scrawny and thin, with cuts and bruises, marring her pale skin. She looked scared and malnourished, like she was begging for life. I clicked the next photo, and nearly puked. The young woman from before now sat in a chair facing the camera, her dead, dull eyes boring into me. Covered in blood, her abdomen had been torn open. In her cold, unfeeling arms, she held the child, still attached by the umbilical cord. Its half-formed, lifeless body was a deep crimson with blood, and one could tell that it had been forcibly torn out. On the wall just behind them, written in their blood, were the words, Peace in harsh, hasty letters. I don't know what possessed me to keep scrolling through the photos. It was as if I couldn't control my own faculties. 
The images only got more and more grotesque the further I looked. The following images seemed to be a time lapse of the decomposition of a body. I watched them rot sitting there together. I have watched the face of a mother, which could have been once considered beautiful, wither and collapse in on itself as a fetid mound of flesh. By the end of this series, there were nothing more but desiccated skeletons. I would have knocked the hell out of there had it not been for the message that popped up on my screen. It was from the website chat. Hello there. Did you like what you see? Do you want more? Do you want to attain true peace? I didn't know how to respond. I was rooted to my chair. Then, they spoke again. You don't have to be scared, Zack. I love you. I want to help you. Let me help you. I typed in a simple question. How do you know my name? I got a response very quickly. I know everything about you. I know you really shouldn't leave your curtains open like that. You'll get a draft. You see, I just want to help you. Please let me save you. My eyes flashed to the uncovered window behind me, to the light of my webcam, and my heart skipped a beat when I realized it was on. They were watching me! I made a move to try and pull the plug when another message popped up. Don't try and shut me out. I'll bring you peace. I swear, Zachary Tanner. The only real bliss in this world. That was the last message before I finally shut it off. Needless to say, I stayed off the internet for a while after that. Just today I got back on praying to God that it would have blown over. Oh, how wrong I was. I logged into my email only to find it spammed with emails from an account named I'll Show You Peace. Each had the same message. I want to save you. I want to love you. I want to bring you peace. All in caps. But that wasn't the worst of it. Each and every message had a candid photo of me taken within the last week. I've tried to involve the police, but they haven't been much help. What the hell do I do? Remember when those deep web stories were a fad? Every week you'd get a new tale of someone going too far on the deep web, finding something terrible and end up getting attacked for speaking out against it. I was a senior in high school at the time, when that was a fad. And I was definitely not a popular kid. My friends and I were the oddities of the school, the few people who dared defy the norm. It was them who told me about the deep web. A place on the internet where you're completely unwatched, anonymous, capable of doing whatever you want. Of course I was intrigued. Most of my friends just used it to buy their drugs, but I thought a little bigger. I wanted to know what happened in the darkest recesses of the deep web. Whether or not my friends were telling the truth when they spoke about horrible fetish sites and assassins you could hire. Of course I wasn't planning on using any of it. I've never been particularly interested in any of that stuff. It was the mystery of it all that fascinated me. Going to these sites would be like peering into a side of the world few have barely seen. A whole new experience. At the time, I was tired of the monotony of life. I'd get up at the same time every day, go to school, attend the same classes, talk to the same people, go home, play some games, do homework and sleep, and then repeat. I wondered, what if other people got tired of it too? It took me a while to actually dive into the deep web. As fascinated as I was, I'd been warned that what could happen. I read the stories and talked about it. Who wasn't afraid of being threatened by hackers or stalked by some creep you piss off online? That kind of stuff sent me from actually going on the deep web. Until the day I manned up and decided it was time to break the monotony. It was time to delve into the underbelly of the internet. Time to see a world I had only dreamed of. For the first week, it was boring. It was just drug sites and stuff where people exposed government secrets or whatever. Nothing as dark as I expected. I don't even do drugs, so that was useless to me, and I wasn't going to go into politics. There was nothing really to interest me. I was so deeply disappointed. The only reason I kept exploring was my sheer desire to experience the world I thought existed. The world darker than any drug site. I eventually got my wish. Just when my apathy towards the deep web reached its highest point, I found what I was looking for. The site didn't have a name. I just thought it was a broken link for a bit, since it led me to a black screen. But right before I could click out, a chat box opened on the screen. 
someone called admin typed in saying, Congrats, you found the worst place on the internet. I stared at the screen, more bemused than afraid, and I took a moment before I typed back. Cool. What else was there to say? I'm here to see your finest videos of people being hurt for pleasure. A moment after, the admin replied, Ha, you want in? I hesitated, all those stories flooding back into my head. But it was too late to chicken out. This was what I came for. Even if I just clicked out at the first sign of danger, I had to see what was there. I had to break the monotony. I had to. I hastily typed back, not allowing myself to stop. Yeah. The chat box closed, and I was led directly to what looked like a video with another chat box next to it. There was around five other people there, each eagerly waiting for something. The video was in black and white, and it showed a small room. The only thing inside was a wooden chair, until after around five minutes of waiting, the door and room opened. A man was shoved inside, blindfolded and naked, save for a pair of black briefs. He was followed by a woman, this one dressed in all black, her face covered by a mask. In an instant, the chat room went wild. I almost closed the window to spare myself, knowing immediately where this was going, but again I told myself, this is what I wanted. Maybe not the torture, but the window into the very worst parts of the world. The woman pulled a knife from her pocket and cut the man's blindfold off and shoved him into the chair. He didn't struggle for a moment, and once his eyes were visible, I could see why. He looked like he'd been drugged. Resisting was impossible. I frowned, glancing to the side. This was messed up. I knew this was messed up. My conscience told me to call the cops, or at least click out. But I forced myself to watch. She turned to the camera, pointing the knife at the man's throat. One of the people in the chat typed, One of the fingers, get the fingers! I clenched my hand into fists, taking sharp breaths. Was this really about to happen? Was I going to watch as this guy got mutilated by a small crowd for their amusement? I had a feeling that only worsened when the woman nodded and turned to the man. Breathing heavily, I hovered my cursor over the X, planning to get the hell out of there. But I didn't. The woman looked unimpressed, as if she thought people in the chat could do better than that request. Another person called to slice up his arm. He was bleeding heavily now, clearly in pain. But these people were cheering it on, suggesting new and painful methods for her to inflict torture. Eventually, I stopped breathing heavily and stopped feeling sick. It was starting to grow on me. By the end, the man was on the ground, covered in blood and breathing heavily. I watched for around half a minute. The people in the chat were starting to die down. They'd inflicted enough pain and had their fun. It seemed like things were wrapping up. Funny, I thought, how it was all over when I was just getting into it. I smirked. This is better than any game I could play. Much better than any class I could attend. End him. Throat. I typed into the chat for the first time. She nodded one last time and met my request. Once it was done, she dropped him, and he fell to the ground limply. The people in the chat started complimenting her, talking about how it had been another good time, setting a date for the next show. On screen, the woman left the room, leaving what was left of the poor man behind. Of course, I hastily wrote down the date for the next viewing. This was going to be a part of my life now. I was going to be part of something bigger. I was going to command these people's last minutes. What a rush. So yeah, I love the deep web. It all started about a month ago. My family and I were preparing to go on holiday overseas. My Galaxy S7 Edge was playing up on me, so I decided to turn it off and reboot it. I held down the power button and I was bought to the boot logo but it stayed there and wouldn't boot up. I plugged it into my computer to realize that the operating system had corrupt and I needed to do a fresh install. This was impossible, as we had to leave for a plane three hours away from us. I had to put up with using my sister's old iPhone C for the holiday. 
Since I didn't want to be charged for overseas usage with my phone provider, I decided to leave my SIM card in my Galaxy S7. Progressing through my holiday, we got to a period where there was horrible weather and couldn't do much. I was stuck in my room bored absolutely mindless and decided to start talking to my friends. I used my iPad to talk to my friend as they had the applications pre-installed and the internet was rubbish. I remember before I went on the holiday, they started a new craze with the dark web. I have some knowledge of computers and technology, so I realised this wasn't a place you should really mess around. The group chat got me on the conversation of the dark web and started talking about all the things that they had witnessed. It didn't actually sound that bad, so I asked what they were searching on it. Plenty replied with the answer, Tor, and others came back with applications on their iPhones called Onion Browser. I thought about it. This iPhone had been wiped so many times that there would be no information on my sister, so what did I have to lose? The pressure got to me, and I bit the bullet and went to the App Store and downloaded it. I opened up the browser and headed over to the wiki to show me some sites that I could access. They were the basic ones, like Black Market, like guns, drugs, and hitman services. I saw there was another section to the wiki and clicked on it. The website had minimal information about them, so you didn't really know what you were getting yourself into until you loaded the site up. I closed my eyes, scrolled down a bit, and clicked on a random link. As I opened my eyes, I was looking at some sort of website with numerous services on it. It seemed pretty clean until all of a sudden a chat window popped up on the bottom right hand side. Hi. Welcome new user, thanks for coming. No problem, I said, thinking nothing of it, and saw another message. We have a show about to start. Would you like to join? At this point I was oddly curious about what show the user was talking about. I wondered what it could possibly be. Yeah, why not? I was then greeted with a bunch of terms and conditions. The one that stuck out was, if you leave before the show has ended, your IP will be blocked from the site and you'll never be able to access the site again. What, they have my IP? I was worried for a moment, but then thought, I'm in a hotel. What's the spat that could happen? I agreed to the terms and conditions and followed the instructions to the show. I was presented with a hidden part of their site, with a blank live feed in the middle. It was counting down to the start of the show, and as the counter got to the one minute mark, a chat box appeared at the bottom. I saw people entering messages in. It was a chat for us to communicate while the show was happening. Nothing was really said, just a few hellos and how we are. There wasn't any talk about what the show would be. The timer got to zero and the live feed started. It was a man with an anonymous mask and he greeted us all. Hello and welcome to the show. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us again. If you're an existing user, welcome back, thanks for returning. We have something special in store for you today. The guy stepped away from the camera and turned a light on. A girl was strapped to a chair, with only her bra and panties on. She was wearing a mask too. I was a bit worried and thought she was going to be assaulted sexually, but I was wrong. Another chat window popped up with a user by the name of Scarecrow476. The host asked to inform them what they wanted to happen. He replied, something absolutely horrific. As I was reading it, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they were willing to take the life of this fine looking girl. I was frantic, I had no idea what to do, and my eyes started to water as he began to load up the weapon. I felt like throwing up and typed in the chat, you guys are mental and I hope you get killed in the worst ways imaginable. This is where I made the worst mistake of my life. I was immediately redirected to a blank screen with a chat box. The user was by the name of site owner and I knew at this point I'd messed up. You go to the police and you and your whole family will be finished. I won't, I replied, just let me go. I turned the application off and immediately uninstalled the application. I was scared for my life. I had no idea what to do. I returned home to find that everything in life seemed to be normal. I wiped the phone and listed it up for sale. A guy bought it for his daughter as a gift. He was a nice guy who was about to go on vacation for a weekend to the city. He thanked me and left.
I was so relieved. I don't ever want to see that phone again. I remember the horrible things I saw while on my holiday away. A week had passed, and as I was watching TV, breaking news came on. A family had been brutally murdered, visiting the city for the weekend. They had been uncontactable for a whole week, and their immediate family were worried and called the police. They found them dead in a hotel. They had no idea who'd done it, and wanted witnesses or people with information to step forward. It hit me like a freight train. They got the IMEI from the phone, and when they logged on to any form of social media, they could find out who they were, and someone then hunted them down because of my mistake. I feel absolutely horrible. My advice to you, never go on the dark web. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. So, why did we do deep web stories? Well, dear listeners, I'm just going to explain it as is it as it is really um i haven't done it in a while i actually collected these stories about a year and a half ago with the intention of doing the video a long time ago but other topics get more limelight really and seeing as these aren't really true and i generally stick to true stories i just kind of forgot about doing it but with the whole reddit shutdown and so many subreddits being out of commission for the meantime um i had to do something and this was one of the few subreddits that I used that remained open. And I had these permissions for a long time, so I thought it would be about time to do them. Um, if you like more deep web stories, I realize that people aren't really writing about the deep web anymore. These stories being like, what, six years old at least? So yeah, if you want more, let me know. If not, it's cool to do this just like really, really rarely. All right then, guys. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Huge thank you as always to my members and patrons whose names are on screen. And I'll see you all in the next one. Stay awesome.